Hey, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to be multiplying fractions. The next lesson on fractions. Now, the thing about multiplying fractions is that it's actually the easiest thing to do with fractions. So we're starting out um, with the thing that's the easiest. When you're multiplying fractions, this is, a, this is it. You do the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom and you're done. Um, some cases they'll need to be simplified, but after you do the top times the top, bottom times the bottom, that's you know, then you simplify it and then you're done. All right, let's take a look at it. 1 over 3 times 4 over 5. So what I'm going to do is 1 times 4, top times the top, 3 times 5, bottom times the bottom. In other words, the numerators are multiplied and the denominators are multiplied, and we end up with 4 over 15. 4 over 15 is already in lowest terms. We can't reduce that down any further, so that's it. We're done. Okay. Now, with other functions, we're going to do, eventually we're going to talk about other functions. And they work a little bit differently, but with multiplying, that's it. Top times top, bottom times bottom, and you're done. It's the only one that works quite like this, and it's nice. All right, one more for fun. 5 over 6 times 5 over 7. We're going to do 5 times 5, 6 times 7. We'll get 25 over 42. Again, that is in lowest terms, so we're done. Pretty good. So with this type of question, when you have final answers that are in simplest form, it's easy, easy, easy. The tough part is when you get some multiplying and they, re they take some reduction or some, um, yeah, you want to reduce the fraction at the end. You solve it in the same way, top times top, 1 times 2, bottom times bottom, 2 times 3. And what you'll end up with is, in this case, 2 over 6. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. We have 2 over 6. Now we're going to reduce the fraction using the steps that we talked about in our um, video about equivalent fractions or reducing fractions. We're going to list the factors of the smallest number. 2 is our smallest number, so let's list those factors, 1 and 2. That's all the factors of 2. 2 is a prime number, factors of 1 and 2. We're going to check for any common factors from our larger number. Now, all we really need to do is check the fact, is 1 a factor? Well, 1 doesn't even matter. So we really only needed to check, is 2 a factor of 6? But we can list out all the factors and then pick the greatest common factor if we choose. Right? But you really wouldn't need to list 3 or 6 because they can't possibly be factors of 2. They're bigger than 2. All right? So you check for common factors, in this case 2. We're going to divide both the numerator and denominator by 2. So we're going to take our fraction, 2 over 6. We're going to divide the top divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And the bottom, 6 divided by 2, is 3. And we'll get to the end where our answer is 1 third. Now, this is what you would do if you're reducing fractions. I want to point one thing out here, um, that multiplication, especially when you're talking about fractions, it's often translated to the word of, O-F. So what we're saying is half of two-thirds, or one-half times two-thirds. But it's pretty obvious when we look at our final answer that half of two-thirds is one-third, all right? And that makes sense. And so we can check our answer using words, and that sometimes helps to clarify. So the multiplication sign, if we're going to translate in, that into a word phrase, we would use of. So this is one-half of two-thirds, and that'll be one-third as our final answer. Makes sense. All right. Let's do um, some more, and we're going to look at the different types of questions we might get. Uh, let's say we get one like this, where we have a number times a, and then a number times a number. We're going to solve it exactly the same way that we would do the other one. We would say the top 2 times the top, or the numerator times the numerator, denominator times the denominator, and we'll get 2a over 15. Now, as much as we would like to reduce that down and simplify it any further, we can't. We don't know what a is, so what we're left with is just 2a over 15. That'll be our final answer. Okay? So when you have variables like that, um, sometimes your variables just end up being variables, and that's the way it's going to be. So that's our final answer is 2a over 15. Can't reduce it down, can't do anything with it. That's it. 
All right. Now this one more here, I threw in a negative number and a variable. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative 7 times n gives us negative 7n, and 9 times 2 is 18. All right, and that's it. Now, one case that I didn't show here, I should probably should have, but if we had a number here that had a common factor with a denominator, you can still reduce them down even though they have an, um, a variable in there. All right, so for example, if I had 3x over 9, I can still do 3x divided by 3 and 9 divided by 3, because 3 would be my greatest common factor. 3 cancels out with 3, and I end up with x over 3. You can do that if you have a variable. All right, so you can still reduce the numbers down, just like normal, just like 3 over 9. You would reduce that down because they have the greatest common factor of 3. Okay. So if you get a situation like that, you can still reduce it down even though there is a variable there. And I didn't have a specific question like that, so I just wanted to add that, that little note in. But when you're multiplying with variables, negative 7 times n is negative 7n, 9 times 2, 18. That would be your final answer in this case. Reduce down to lowest terms because 7 and 18 have no common factors other than 1. All right, that is multiplying fractions. Remember, top times the top, bottom times the bottom, and simplify and you're done.